Hello. Hello. Well, good evening. It's really nice to be with you again. It feels like a long break since last time I was talking with everyone. My name is Becky, Becky Jones, and I'm an interfaith minister. And that means that I work to support spiritual things for people who believe but don't usually belong to anything. So um, I look to embrace all forms of belief, all followers of the divine, whatever word they choose to use for that. And I'm talking to you this evening from Taunton, which is a lovely town in the southwest of England. We've had a really cold, crisp winter's day today. The sun's been out, the skies have been vibrant blue, and it's just been gorgeous. So um, it's very nice to be here. And I've got some thoughts jotted down that I hope to share with you this evening. And I hope you enjoy listening. So it's December, the season for Christians of Advent. Um, pagans await the solstice, the turning of the year. The Hindus have just had Diwali and their new year. And in the US, millions of turkeys have met their end in deference to Thanksgiving. And even in the Islamic world, Christmas decorations abound. I've been sent some fabulous photographs from Kuala Lumpur of shopping centres there, and they really make our shopping centres in the UK look as if we're not trying for Christmas. So everywhere, Christmas fever. And it's safe to say, I think, that pretty much wherever you are, you're surrounded with reminders of Christmas. Tradition tells us that Advent, this season that we're in, is a time of waiting, of getting ready. And also that at this time, wise men from the East embarked on a journey following a portentous star. And they traveled with gifts for a king and arrived at Epiphany, which falls 12 days after Christmas on the 6th of January. So this evening, I've been wondering what to talk about and two threads have kind of woven together as I've contemplated our underlining theme of peace in relation to this time of frenetic busyness. And I've thought about those wise men following their star, and that has some connections really with my own journey of late and the things that I shared with you last time we spoke. So <clears throat> to begin with, I'll light my little faux candle, which is actually an electric Buddha. Where's his switch? There he is. So that's my candle lit for peace. And he's surveying us as we share this time together. And then I'd like us to just listen to a verse. Well, it's not really a verse, a poem by a guy called uh, Jeff Foster. I think I've shared his work with you before. And you can find more of it at www.lifewithoutacenter.com. <clears throat> Jeff writes, be exactly what you are. Don't try to trust. Simply trust that you cannot trust right now. Don't force gratitude. Just be grateful that you aren't grateful and love that the demand for gratitude is illusory. Love your inability to love fully. Accept your non-acceptance. Surrender to your absolute failure to surrender today. This is freedom right where you are. Freedom to feel unfree. To taste life totally at the point of creation. To be exactly what you are, no matter what. Whatever arises, however unwanted, however disappointing, however ephemeral, say, this is none other than life itself. And I've got another one for you from Rumi, an old favourite. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival 
a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house, empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the, do at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. <coughs> Excuse me. So this idea of welcoming all comers was what I was thinking of speaking about. And if you've seen my previous talks, you'll know that back in the summer, I loved the idea of being taken on a magic carpet ride an occasion when I had little option but to trust God fully in my utter helplessness following some surgery. And despite the circumstances, I longed for more of this experience, for more of that deep trust of God, because there was a real profound peace in that place. So of late, I've been temping, um, working temporarily for an agency, having resigned a job that was not bringing me joy. <clears throat> and this talk isn't about the journey to that point, but it's quite a journey, I can tell you. I want a full time permanent job for all kinds of reasons, not least to make my contribution to our household bills. So I've been applying for jobs alongside temping and weeks have passed in a world of applications, interviews, calls from agencies and prospective choices. And it's been tiring. But as each opportunity has opened and closed like twinkling lights along the way, I've become once again to have a real sense of being carried on that magic carpet. I still have no idea where I'll land, but because I've opened to every possible opportunity, I'm increasingly able to trust that whatever it is, wherever it is, is where the universe can best look after me. And this thought, this idea is a very great blessing for me because for the longest time I've been asking to be shown how to trust. And in a very real sense, <coughs> excuse me, I've been following a star, the star of allowing myself to acknowledge and to be wholly who I am. I've virtually stopped using a salary as a criterion for seeking work. And yes, there is a certain bandwidth within which I look. But whereas before I refused to countenance anything below a given salary, I've now acknowledged the importance of having work in which I can express my being and I'm trusting, relying on God to ensure that my material needs are met. I'm mindful within this that I also have a responsibility to utilise my resources wisely. And that's really where Christmas comes in. I think that one of the hallmarks of Christmas in the 21st century is the pressure to spend and to deplete our resources in every sense. The pressure to do so across every dimension of our life is enormous, certainly here in the UK. And I imagine everywhere that the tentacles of commercialism have caught hold of the Christian tradition. So, I mean, just think for a moment of the images and cliches that surround the modern Christmas season. Christmas is a time for giving, for cards, for presents, for charity. It's a time when tables are supposed to groan with sumptuous food and homes brim with partying guests. It's a time for families gathered in festive sharing, roaring log fires and trees glistening with ornaments. And the collective impact of all these images is that when we don't give gifts or when we limit our list or worse still, receive a gift from someone we haven't wrapped a gift for, we feel bad and squirmy with guilt and shamed. And when we're at home with our beans on toast, we have a sense of failure. Where was our party invitation? 
or we go to the party and feel as if we're the only one wearing last year's outfit. Everyone ragged, everyone colluding in the completely imaginary deadline of Christmas. Or we must get together before Christmas, we say. Or let's try and have that meeting before the holidays. Even our time is stretched so thin, we feel as if we haven't a minute for rest. And maybe worst of all, we're weighed down with obligation. The guilt trip when we don't manage to visit a distant relative at Christmas. Or when we do visit, but our opening line is, it's just a fleeting visit. I need to pop and see so-and-so before I go home. Our employers might pay us early on Christmas Eve to help with the expense of the season. And unwittingly, they create sleepless nights for us as we wonder how to make a month's pay do the work of six weeks after Christmas until the end of January. Our imaginations are racked as well. What can we possibly buy for Uncle Norman or little Jane that they might like or haven't already got? We stay up or stay out late. We get tired and grumpy. We eat and drink more than is good for us and feel sluggish. Or we don't and then we feel resentful. We spend time partying, which we might hate but daren't admit it, in the company of people that we mightn't ordinarily choose to spend the time with, at office parties for example, where we'll often repeatedly eat traditional food we don't like all that much when it's served on, except when it's served on Christmas Day, at prices that wouldn't attract at prices it wouldn't attract at any month except for December, whilst our kids make miserable, um, miserable in... Oh dear, I've got me, me words fuddled. Whilst our kids make miserable the evening of a babysitter who would prefer to be out partying. And it crosses our mind to opt out altogether. And that sets off a whole new range of feelings of guilt and inadequacy. And if we manage to cross that particular Rubicon, and I can say this with authority because I've done it, it remains difficult to stay unaffected by the fever that afflicts all around us and we can feel isolated in a kind of self-inflicted exile. So that by January it's quite possible that we're worn out, bored, broke, quite literally sick and tired of the whole thing and dreading going back to work into the bargain because we've got used to getting up a bit later. Now, you could be forgiven for expecting my next words to be bah humbug, but they're not, I promise you. And I don't mean to paint too gloomy a picture of Christmas because actually I do like it. I love Christmas. But what we need, generally speaking, at this time of year is a survival plan. And it seems to me that such a plan is very simple, if not easy. <clears throat> So I'd like to share with you my recipe for a happy Christmas or a cool Yule. I spoke a bit earlier about following the star. And my star is, what am I here for? Here in this life, I mean. And the star of Christmas for me is, what is this season for? What are all our efforts about at Christmas? Christmas is a time of peace and goodwill. It's a time of joy and sharing. It's a time for both giving and receiving. Yule is a celebration of light in the midst of darkness and a time which reminds us in the depths of winter that spring is on its way. So how can we keep our eye on this star? How can the star guide us? How can we each find peace in this most difficult of seasons? Well, first of all, we need to take care of ourselves. Now, I'm no health freak, as you can tell by looking at me. And I truly believe that looking after ourselves, taking care of ourselves looks different for each of us. But rather than making it about deprivation and not taking part, let's consider adding. Drink more water. If you don't want water instead of wine, have it as well. Eat more fresh vegetables and fruit. And if you don't want it instead of party food and chocolates, have it as well. 
have it first and see whether the chocolate seems as appetizing afterwards but don't decline any yummy thing on the grounds of self-discipline there lies the road to resentment and deprivation and speaking of indulging ourselves sleep we need to sleep whilst we sleep is when our body detoxes when it recovers when it repairs when it gets us ready for the next day so if there's a choice between lying asleep for an extra 15 minutes or getting up extra early to run to the shops before the rush pick the sleep let your kids earn some treat or extra pocket money by staying quiet until you wake up without their help at the weekend just for December and if the jobs are all done by 9 30 at night hit the sack instead of staying up just because second we need to take care of our boundaries this is a harder one I think but a wise friend once said to me if you can't do it with love try not to do it at all if you're asked to go to a party that you hate the thought of simply and pleasantly decline practice in the mirror if you have to smiling and saying oh thank you so much for asking me but I don't think so this time you don't need an alibi use gaffer tape not excuses and if you're questioned further then you could do someone a favor by modeling good boundaries I'm sorry but I find I can really wear myself out this time of year and I'd rather not but let's go for a drink in January it's really nice to have something to look forward to let's fix a date now boundaries with our gifting are also important not being bullied into giving to people that we don't actually care about just because everyone else in the office is doing it limiting our budget for gifts to the children or to the family allowing them to understand a bit about the actual cost not just in terms of money but time and effort and the amount of work that has to be done to earn a given amount of money allowing them to understand a bit about the actual cost of the things that they have to have boundaries with our energy if the phone rings when you don't feel like talking don't answer it if you can't do it with love don't do it at all and that might, might sound, sound really kind of tough but I can promise you that having practiced for quite some time I don't think it's impaired my um, my following of my personal star as a lovely accommodating person and I don't think any of my friends would say that I've become hard-hearted or grinchy no by caring for me and making sure that I look after myself I have more to give other people not less so third drop the resistance Christmas isn't going to go away our society is unlikely to suddenly make a u-turn in its attitude to the season in fact it's going to carry on getting worse I imagine except there will be choices to be made some events will be missed and some will be made the best of except that the shops will be rammed and loud with the 200 greatest Christmas hits ever sing along at least the other shoppers will give you a wide berth drop the resistance to the idea that the perfect Christmas is largely an illusion a light in the darkness of winter months it's not an aspiration or we're still a competency test it's an illusion and fourth when you do Christmas differently and I hope you might find something in what I've said that you'd like to have a go at think of it as making your own tradition rather than breaking with some kind of obligatory one rope your loved ones in to creating your own special ways of doing things which can make doing them more simply or more cheaply or later or whatever your way and therefore special in their own right have a competition see who in the family can buy the best present for the least cost and make a formal competition with a prize of it 
Make it a big deal that we don't decorate the tree until the weekend before Christmas. See who can manage to go to bed earliest. <laughs> Use your imagination. There are so many ways to make fun a change to just being a slave to this habit of doing what everybody apparently does. Follow your Christmas star. Remember what this season is about for you. Remember who you are. Open your arms and your heart to all the season brings and raise the drawbridge against the material demands that leave you beached and gasping. I've talked a lot faster than I expected. I'm going to read those two poems again. I might do them twice. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing. Invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes. Because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. I will read it again. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honourably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. And Jeff Foster, be exactly what you are. Don't try to trust. Simply trust that you cannot trust right now. Don't force gratitude. Just be grateful that you aren't grateful and love that the demand for gratitude is illusory. Love your inability to love fully. Accept your non-acceptance. Surrender to your absolute failure to surrender today. This is freedom, right where you are. The freedom to feel unfree, to taste life totally at the point of creation, to be exactly what you are, no matter what. Whatever arises, however unwanted, however disappointing, however ephemeral, say, this is none other than life itself. Be exactly what you are. Don't try to trust, simply trust that you cannot trust right now. Don't force gratitude, just be grateful that you aren't grateful. Love that the demand for gratitude is illusory. Love your inability to love fully. Accept your non-acceptance. Surrender to your absolute failure to surrender today. This is freedom. Right where you are. The freedom to feel unfree. To taste life totally at the point of creation, to be exactly what you are, no matter what. Whatever arises, however unwanted, however disappointing, however ephemeral, say, this 
is none other than life itself. This is none other than life itself. So, I'm a wee bit short. Please forgive me. But I wish you a blessed and joyful December, whichever tradition is yours. Or if you have no tradition, a blessed and joyful December and a peaceful Christmas, a Yule, midwinter, whatever you call it. And may the peace that passes all understanding be planted firmly and thrive in your life next year. Namaste.